Hi, this is Mahesh Ravi and in this video we're going to take a look at how to create a photo composite using mobile apps. So we're going to use an array of applications to get this done. So let's get started with the first app and that is going to be Pixart. Pixart is a free app that you can download uh, from your Play Store or App Store. And you can click this plus icon right here at the bottom to start a new project. You can start it from an empty canvas. You can start it from an existing image or you can use several other templates which are available right here in the home screen of PixArt. But we are going to start with a free photograph. So click see all where you can see a collection of um, royalty free images which, are, which is available in PixArt. So I'm going to click on the search button. I'm going to type open ground. And it's going to show us a lot of images from various resources. You can see, uh, we can see it from Shutterstock. We have Unsplash. We can scroll down and we can see a lot of images which are available that we could use uh, straight from here. So I'm going to find an image. So once you find the image, you click it to open this in Pixar workspace and we have it open in Pixar workspace right now. We can see a set of tools down here. So the second tool right here, the first one says gold. So that's the paid feature. So if you want to use any paid features, which is there in the app, you can click on that. But we don't need it. We are going straight to the tools and click on the crop because we are going to cut this image for Instagram and we need this in a square aspect ratio. So I'm going to select square. We can move it to set our crop. And once you're happy with it, you can click apply. And now we have our image cropped to the right size. So the next thing that we need to do is to add some elements in here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to add a car, right? We need a car in here. So we can do it in a couple of ways. We can add a photo. If you have a photo um, that is downloaded already and you have it on your phone, you can click on add photo and choose it from your gallery. Another very cool feature that you can do is if you go to the sticker options in PixArt, you can search for images here. So if you search for a car, you can find images which are already cropped images, which are already, um, you know, uh, background removed images of a lot of cars that are available in here. So you can choose any one and you can, you can start easily. So this is how easy it is to get um, started. All you require is your creativity here. So I'm going to click on this car. I like this car and I'm going to take it here. I'm going to place it where I want it. I can scale it up, scale it down. I can place it wherever I want it. So I put it right here in the scene. Now, um, there are a couple of problems in this uh, particular shot, the image that you are seeing right now. The first thing is that the car, the contrast of the car and the background is not matching. So I'm going to go here, click on the adjust here, and I'm going to reduce the brightness. I'm going to bring down the brightness so that the, uh, the values actually match. I can also reduce the contrast a little bit. So the background is matching right now with the foreground. That is our new object. And I'm going to click apply. So we just tweaked the colors a little bit to match the shot. Now there is another problem. When an object is sitting on the ground, there should be a shadow underneath it. Otherwise, it's going to look uh, pasted. So we need to add a shadow right in here. There is an option called shadow in PixArt, but if you use that, the shadow is going to be cast as, you know, a 2D object, which means that, you know, wherever it is available, the shadow will be there in the background as well. So this is not how a car will cast shadow. So we cannot use that. So I'm going to undo that. So if you go to the top, undo button, click on it. You can, you know, um, remove all the effects that you have added. So I've removed the shadow, uh, which is already available here. So we need to find a different way to add a shadow. So what I'm going to do is, a, a hack, uh, a very interesting, you know, um, hack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a photo and I have this photograph of a black circle in a white background. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this image, a very simple image. You can use this image to create some realistic shadows for this car. It's pretty simple. So when I scale it down a bit, let's zoom in so that you can see this a little clear. I'm going to just play around with the shape of that stretch it a bit, maybe rotate it slightly. So now what 
the problem right now is that there are two things there is a white background which we don't need and also this is on top of the car so first get let's get rid of the white uh, patch to do that you can go to blend mode and select multiply so the black uh, the white is gone from the image and you are only seeing this black patch which is pretty good now the other problem that we were talking about is that this is actually you know uh, above the car we need to move it down right so we can click on this layer button right here and we can click move down so now you can see that the shadow is under the car and it's working pretty good the problem is that this is very sharp shadows will not be like this so we need to add a little bit of blur amount in here so i'm going to go to effects and click on blur and then increase the blur value to the maximum so we'll get an image like this this is looking pretty decent let's bring the car down and now we have a decent shadow for our car which is sitting on the ground so it's more realistic and it's pretty mo more believable when you're working on a surrealistic scene like this so we have figured out the shadow now another thing that we need to do is if a car is you know parked like this and there is shadow in here the bottom of the car will also have an amount of shadow affecting that it's called ambient occlusion it is not happening here because the car basically doesn't have any shadows right so we need to add or we need to darken the bottom portion of this car so the easy way to do is to duplicate the car layer so i'm going to just go here duplicate the car so we have another version of the car right here so i'll just keep it right here for reference what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to adjust i will reduce the brightness really down so we have a really you know uh low bright i mean with very low brightness that is the car version we have right here now what i want to do is i just want to um you know erase the top portion of this because we just need the darkness at the bottom right so we can go to the eraser tool on top we can choose the eraser brush reduce the hardness reduce the opacity maybe increase the size and erase the top of the car so yeah it sort of works out like this we have a version like this of the car like this now we are ready to move it back to the original car we just snap it onto the place so we can play around with the opacity a little bit now we can see that there is uh, a little bit of shadow which is bleeding from there this was the original shot once we added the ground darkness it is becoming like this it's more real this is how in a real world the car will look like so we have that shot set so now we need to add our next element which is the girl who is sort of falling it's a very surrealistic scene it doesn't mean anything you know it's just a crazy thought so I'm again go into sticker and click on a keyword or type in a keyword called falling so we have a lot of images of people falling and i'm going to choose this girl from there and scale it down and then i'm going to move it um, to to the cloud some somewhat like this so we have the image i will reduce the opacity of the girl a little bit so that it's uh, she is sort of inside the fog sort of thing so we have made our basic scene we are not done yet this is just one app and we have to use a couple of different apps to get the effect that we need we have the basic scene set and almost everything is working fine we are going to download this image so click on the download button on top and we just saved it into um, our camera roll which is fine now we're going to open our next app so here we are in the second app um, called lens distortions you can click on begin a project and choose uh, the file the image that we just created out of pixart lens distortions is a really really interesting app which lets you uh, play around with lights uh, overlays and a lot of other funny stuff so what basically we are trying to do is to add some light effects into this uh, photograph something like you know um, a headlight for example so i'm going to click on light hits I will choose a light, I will scale the light, I can scale it by just swiping with two fingers. I can go into the settings of this by clicking on the light and I can duplicate it to take um, a copy of that light. We can move the lights uh, with our finger. So 
in the bottom panel you can see that we just added on our image we added two lights you can click on the plus sign next to it and you can add more light effects to it so let's say if you want to add a fog effect you can just click on that and a fog effect will appear right there you can scale it you can move it and you can place it wherever you want and this is already pre-keyed which means that it doesn't have any background and it's very smooth and it will look really good on your images so there are snow effects in here so i'm going to just click on a snow effect i can scale it up i can scale it down and you know again we can move it around once you're ready you can click on the export button and you can export it as a jpeg file so it will be exported to um, your phone now we are moving on to the third um, application which is snapseed this is used for color grading so i'm just going to go to the tune image i will play around with my brightness and i can increase uh, the brightness i can play around with the saturation and uh, we can get a really good output from uh, this app it's pretty easy to play around with and uh, once you're done you can export that as well I hope uh, you have enjoyed this tutorial. It's a very, very, very interesting thing to try out with your mobile phones without even touching the computer. So try it out. We'll see you with another video soon. Till then, bye.